The Franken turrets were an attempt to show one of the ways Wheatley has been spending his time since he threw the player down into the underground. Using his limited brain, it didn't seem like he could have come up with a lot, so the idea of using objects he'd have access to seemed appropriate. The turret and the cube are the two most iconic portal objects, and the Franken turret is little more than a crude combination of those two objects. The hermit crab animation when you pick the cubes up began as a necessity, because we really needed to make them act like cubes when you held them. It ended up being so cute that it became a simple job of making the turret widen its eye and shake its little head to convey to the player that these things were disrupted and had no idea who or what they were anymore, and also to make the player feel sympathetic towards their plight. We used a combination of in-game physics pushes and canned Meyer animation to allow the player freedom to move them wherever they wanted, line up races between them, or even set them up so they would walk, inevitably to their doom, into a fizzler. Wheatley's first test was really fun to make because we wanted it to feel like he was a first time level designer. We see a lot of maps where people try using different textures or lights to write words or put their names on the walls. One of the big plot holes that Potatoes introduced was she's your buddy now, she's got the same goals as you, so why isn't she helping you solve the test? The real answer is obviously that if she did help you solve the test there'd be no game left. One solution we came up with was for the bird from Act 3 to keep swooping in and pecking bits of her off your gun. As the bird kept eating the part of her that knew how to solve the test, potatoes would actually get dumber over time. For technical reasons, this ended up being impossible to execute, so we ended up finding another solution. Some of us, though, will always have a place in our heart for the bird solution. Finding the right balance for Evil Wheatley was difficult because we still wanted him to be the bumbling idiot from the first half of the game. But at the same time, there had to be some sense that he was dangerous now. Otherwise, there wasn't much tension for the big finale. Fortunately, Stephen Merchant did a great job of intercutting funny bumbling Wheatley with occasional outbursts of power-mad villainous Wheatley. <laughs> Господи, Бог ослови мозг этого примата. Меня нет в этой комнате. Технология. Это сложно понять. In each of Wheatley's test chambers, there is always a monitor with Wheatley on it. While placing the monitor in this level, one of our designers thought it would be funny if the monitor was the target of the faith plate and would get broken if the player or the box flew into it. We thought the gag worked well and decided to make every monitor breakable. The original layout of this chamber started out much more linear, essentially a sequence of rooms that the player had to progress through somewhat blindly, not knowing what the next goal might be until they got there. Early versions contained an extra puzzle beyond the reflector cube, but due to the linear path, it took players so long to get to it that they were confused about which elements were still relevant. This drove us to make the level non-linear. To make it easier for players to visualize the puzzle, we condensed the overall test space and moved the exit near the start. This helped the players see where they had to go and which object would help them get there. We found that playtesters were getting fatigued at solving so many complex test chambers in a row. So, instead of a routine elevator ride to the next puzzle, we added a long funnel ride with some destruction to give players a short break while reminding them of the facility's state of disrepair. While testing this map, we often saw playtesters fixate on the excursion funnel and try to use it to get to the other side, forgetting that they had a portal gun. To remedy this, we added the destruction event that happens just before this chamber. This requires the player to portal through the floor and out of a wall to cross a gap. Once the player enters the test chamber, they're presented with this exact same scenario, but in a different context. Having built up the expectation that Wheatley is going to kill the player, we still wanted the actual moment to be a surprise. By this point, players are entirely comfortable with faith plates, and the simple subversion of expectations as Wheatley punts you sideways is a fun and surprising moment. We added the bouncing box with the intention that players attempt to time their jump to catch the box, focusing their attention on the expected result of their jump and heightening the surprise. Surprise! Прямо сейчас! 
We had a bunch of levels that used crusher panels in ways that made the test chambers more dangerous. After showing some of these levels in press demos, we got feedback that viewers were getting the impression that Portal 2 was going to be too difficult, since players would have to time events such as running or falling through a portal while avoiding getting hit by a deadly crusher. We ultimately decided to save these crushers for the escape when Wheatley tries to hold you off. In this excursion funnel ride, playtesters would often end up shooting the wrong portal at the critical moment and killing themselves. This ruined the moment for players who often didn't quite understand why their excursion funnel hadn't been redirected. As a solution, we now detect when the player places the wrong portal in hopes of saving themselves. We help them out by moving their other portal under the excursion funnel source. This effectively makes the section foolproof by allowing the player to shoot either portal to save themselves. When playtesting the final boss battle, we found players were confused about what to do when they entered Wheatley's lair. Our solution was to train the player by having them break glass paint pipes in the previous level. This lets them learn the mechanic without any time pressure before they have to fight Wheatley. This also trains the player to redirect the bombs Wheatley throws at them. There was a lot of debate over how to properly punish Wheatley at the end of the game. Killing him seemed too severe given how much we'd grown to love the character. On the other hand, simply letting him out of the GLaDOS body with a slap on the wrist seemed unacceptably anticlimactic. Having him sucked out into space with a space sphere seemed like a happy middle ground that everybody could get behind. Wheatley used to have different kinds of attacks other than mobbing bombs. At one point, we tried attaching several turrets to him that he could point at you. This proved too punishing, however, and they were removed. We also tried crusher panels that Wheatley could try to smash you with. This once again proved too punishing, since players were focused on what Wheatley was doing and would often get hit by a crusher they weren't looking at. Надо сказать, отсюда прекрасный вид. 
Как летит время? А ты красавица. Для комплимента время я всегда найду. Хорошо, вернемся к работе. Давай. Ты слышала? Опасность. Реактор поврежден на 75%. Отчет времени остановлен. Запущен протокол уничтожения реактора в экстренной ситуации. Комплекс самоликвидируется через две минуты. Хватит! Я же сказал тебе, не цеплять на меня эти моды! Но ты не слушаешь. Молчишь. Все время. Молчишь и не слушаешь ни одного слова. Осуждаешь меня молча. Это хуже всего. Я просто хотел сделать как лучше для меня. Тебе нужно было лишь пройти пару сотен тестов за несколько лет. А! Парадокс Кота Шрейдингер описывает ситуацию, в которой кофе не ошибся в ситуации отношения, просматривается как это время живой и мертвый. Шрейдингер придумал этот парадокс как оправдание для убийства котов. Это способ подсознания напомнить человеку, что ему нужно прийти в школу, делать шоп и лишиться зубов. В 1948 году по просьбе умирающего мальчика легенда бейсбола Малый Шрут съел 74 хот-дога и умер от отравления. Если у тебя есть проблемы со счетом, ты можешь использовать следующий мнемонический прием. Один меньше, двух меньше, 60 и больше 12 меньше. Опасность. Реактор поврежден на 100%. Необходима ручная замена модуля. О, ясно. Сменный модуль. Вы готовы начать? Неисправный модуль. Вы готовы начать? А ты как думаешь? Ваш туманный ответ истолкован как... Нет, 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 нет! Ты не понял, это сарказм! Безвыходная ситуация. Возгорание в отсеке выхода из безвыходной ситуации выполняется тушение. А, эта штука тут все отмывает, да? Было бы неплохо узнать об этом раньше. Просьба ответственному сотруднику нажать кнопку выхода из безвыходной ситуации. Кнопку, не трогай эту кнопку! кнопку. Не, не делай этого! Я запрещаю тебе ее трогать! Нажимай, нажимай не трогай эту кнопку! Нажимай. Не трогай! Он пятый! Заминировать кнопку! Что? Ты все еще жива? Ты издеваешься, да? Ты смеешься надо мной! Ну так вот, я тут все контролирую! И я понятия не имею, как тут все починить. Ты, значит, играешь тут в кошки-мышки, да? Пока люди пытаются работать. И теперь мы все за это будем расплачиваться, потому что мы все умрем. О, да, прелестно. Бросим последний взгляд на вашу прелестную человеческую луну. Она нам не поможет. Ты мой злейший враг, а все это время ты была моим лучшим другом. Эмоциональный всплеск, который я ощутила, когда спасла тебя, преподал мне еще один важный урок. Теперь я знаю, в какой части меня живет Кэролайн. Кэролайн удалена. Прощай, Кэролайн. Знаешь, только что, когда я стерла Кэролайн, я усвоила важный урок. Лучшее решение проблемы, самое простое. И буду говорить честно. Убить тебя — это непросто. Знаешь, на что были похожи мои дни? Я просто проводила испытания. Никто меня не убивал, не запихивал в картофелину, не скармливал птицам. Очень неплохая жизнь. И тут появилась ты. 
Опасная, немая сумасшедшая. И знаешь что? Ты победила. Уходи. Ха -ха -ха. Было весело, не возвращайся. Remember when you tried to kill me twice? Oh, how we laughed and laughed, except I wasn't laughing. Under the circumstances, I've been shockingly nice. You want your freedom, Timmy K. That's what I'm counting on. like you maybe not quite as heavy now little carolyn is in you too one day they woke me up so i could live forever it's such a shame the same will never happen to you you got your short set life that's what i'm counting on Did you think I meant you? That would be funny if it weren't so sad. Well, you have been replaced. I don't need anyone now. When I delete you, maybe I'll stop feeling so bad. Go make some new disaster. That's what I'm counting on. You're someone else. Я бы хотел все вернуть. Честно. Я честно хотел бы все вернуть. 
Вовсе не потому, что я застрял в космосе. Я в космосе. Я знаю, приятель. Ага. Мы в космосе. Космос. Так или иначе, если бы я ее снова увидел, знаешь, что бы я сказал? Я в космосе. Я бы попросил прощения. Искренне. Мне жаль, что так вышло. Я был властным монстром. И мне действительно жаль. Я в космосе. Конец.